Hey guys, Joe at Small Home Upgrade Prepping. Um, today we're going to get into, I've been getting a lot of questions. Um, we showed how to hook up the generator inlet to power the whole panel, but I have been getting some questions as to how do you actually hook up a transfer panel, okay? And I'm not putting a transfer panel in my house. Um, I kind of just rigged this one up so I can show you guys how this is going to go in, but this is a lot wrong. This is an interior panel. There's nothing right about this one here. So this is only for uh, purposes for me to show you guys. Before I get into that though, uh, with electric, you guys know this if you watch the other video here, um, we have a disclosure for electric, okay? Electric, there is no such thing as a DIY electrician. I show these videos here for educational and entertainment purposes. Um, I'm a master electrician. I've done this for over 30 years. Almost every company that I've worked for over the years, whether it was AC or electric, I managed that company. Um, up until recently when I decided to make a change and do some different things, I was a branch manager for um, one of the biggest electrical companies in the United States. They're in every state of the United States. And I've seen a lot, a lot of things out there, okay? I've seen a lot of electricians where people think that their home is safe and an electrician came out and did something. Um, and it was completely incorrect, okay? So when I do these videos, they're not intended for you to learn how to do this yourself. There is no such thing as a DIY electrician. If you guys are doing electric work yourself, um, all you're doing is putting a lot of people in danger, including yourself. You're putting your family in danger, you're putting you in danger. If you are not trained to do electric, you simply cannot do electric, okay? So these videos aren't intended for you to learn how to do this. They're intended for you to know how to do this. If an electrician comes out to your house, um, you know he's not going to take advantage of you. Um, he, he or she these days, I've worked with a lot of great female electricians as well out there. Um, but you know they are not going to take advantage of you. You know what needs to be done, you know how it's supposed to be done. I've gone out to people's houses where an electrician came out and they actually hooked this up using a stove outlet, okay? Um, very against code, very, very dangerous, and then just run it into a breaker and you look at the side of their panel and there's a little piece of paper taped on there that says turn off main breaker before turning on generator. Well, that's not the code, okay? Uh, that's dangerous, that's potentially going to get a lineman killed. So, um, like I said, these videos are for educational and entertainment purposes only. If you're an entry-level electrician that's actually working in the field under licensed electrician and you're still learning, you're an apprentice, or you're entry-level, um, then you can pick up a lot from these videos. But they're not intended for somebody who's got to go out and do this yourself. Again, there is no such thing as a DIY electrician. If you try to mess with electric and you don't know it, you're most likely going to get yourself killed. Okay? And if you um, watch my first video when we put this in here, I told a story about a young guy in my area several years ago that did get himself killed, okay? Trying to hook up a dishwasher that was hardwired. He had been married for two weeks. They bought a new house that the parents had bought for him. Um, he was trying to put the dishwasher in, and long story short, he got himself killed right in front of his new wife, okay? So electric is not something that you can do. Again, these are so entertainment, educational purposes. So if an electrician comes out to your house, you know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So that aside, like I said, um, that aside, we're going to talk about a transfer panel, and I'm just going to, I'm not hooking this up, so I'm not going to hook it up to my panel. I don't want to put more knockouts in on the bottom, so I'll kind of explain how things here are working. Um, what a transfer panel basically does is, the reason you may need one is um, certain areas, okay, this will power everything up in your house the way I did this, but you do have to turn certain breakers off. You can't run your entire house. It's a 30 amp generator um, that's powering up a 200 amp panel. Well, that's not going to work, okay? Um, basically, some areas will make you for permitting do what's called load calculations, which means you'll have to take the circuits out of this panel here that you want to run on the generator and move them into what's called a transfer panel over here, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, before you do that, you remember our other video where we put an interlock in? Not all manufacturers will make interlocks that will attach to branch breakers like this, okay? A lot of them will make interlocks that attach to the main and the branch breaker. Um, Cutler Hammer is one I'm very, very familiar with. It does have, we call it a seesaw breaker that attaches to these two because one of these breakers will be your feeder breaker, okay? That will be fed from that panel, and uh, I'll get into that in a minute. The other one will connect to the receptacle. So again, they cannot be both put on at the same time. And I'll show you, um, it's good to actually have the parts when you have an electrician come out. It's good for you to buy the parts yourself. You can save a little bit of money. Um, some electricians mark up parts hugely. Other ones just mark them up, you know, like 30%. But if you actually look over here, where did I see this? Um, okay, under accessories, right over here, on the bottom, it is listing the interlock. You see right here, it says interlock. Okay, these are the interlock numbers. You can contact an electrical supplier. Um, in our area, we have City Electric, and we have a bunch of them out there. That's one I've dealt with over the years. Um, and you can actually find out if any of these interlocks here are just main interlocks, or they will connect to a branch breaker as well. So you can build your own transfer panel. You can buy transfer panels at Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that. Um, 
I know Square D has one, there's you know, a lot of them out there, but you don't need to do that. You can actually, as an electrician over the years, the only time I ever used one of those is if a customer bought it himself. If we're coming out as an electrician, we actually build our own panels, okay? And that's what you guys are gonna be seeing here today, what we've done. So I just kind of whipped this together real quick here, like I said, um, it's not gonna be used. I'm not putting it in to connect it. This is an interior panel. This ain't even the right panel. Um, believe it or not, this is a new panel. The bus bar is in good shape. It's a lot discolored here. This has been sitting in my shed for about five years. Um, that one time I had some tools sitting in it and it got rusted here. So this is right now just so I can show you guys today how this will work. But what's gonna happen, okay, is this is called a feeder breaker right here. And again, I'm not gonna knock holes in my panel here, um, but I will explain to you guys how all this works. So what we've done over here is is I've connected two wires to the feeder breaker here. I've connected the neutral up at the top over here and I've connected the ground, okay? So that comes out of this pipe right over here down on the bottom. And what would happen if an electrician is putting this in your house, okay? He'll come up through the bottom right over here with these wires like this right over here, okay? Now this red and the black that you see over here which are connected over here, those will connect to the feeder breaker right over here, okay? Um, that will feed this breaker over here and that makes this panel live, that energizes this panel. So that's how this panel gets its power source, is from this breaker mounted in the main panel to this breaker over here into the transfer panel, okay? So uh, from there the neutral gets connected and the ground gets connected, all right? So now what happens is now we have another breaker, okay? This breaker here is just wired and this is hanging down right over here. I just ran some wires down. That would connect over here from this breaker. That would connect to this inlet right over here, the generator inlet. Uh, again, I'm not going to take this apart. I did do a video on this already, which um, just click on the thumbnail at the end of this video and you'll be able to watch that if you want to see how we installed this and how we put this in. So I'm not going to redo that. But like I said, this breaker here um, would be connected to this inlet, which would come down right over here, right? So what happens is the interlock will connect to this over here. And again, before you do this, make sure that you could get the interlock from the manufacturer, okay? Because a lot of them do make them from the main breaker to a branch breaker, um, but they don't go branch to branch. I've worked with Cutler Hammer you know, over the years. Um, so I know they make one that basically, theirs are really neat because as you turn one off, if this one were on, if I turn this off, this one automatically turns on, okay? Same thing, if I turn this off, this one would automatically turn on. So you don't need to do the both of them. When this panel is being used every day and you're not running your generator, this, the interlock kit, will have this one turned off and then this one over here would be turned on, okay? That's getting power from your panel and that's feeding whatever circuits you've transferred into here. So when the storm comes by, you lose your power, there will be an interlock connected to here, so you should just have to turn this off and when you do that, this one will automatically turn on. So a pretty cool setup the way it is. Then you can hook your generator up to the generator inlet, um, which in this case with the transfer panel would be down over here and that will now send power into this breaker here, energizing the entire bus bar and the breakers that are connected to it, all right? So once this setup is basically done, you have the feeder breaker in here. Um, the feeder breaker is being fed by this breaker over here, and this breaker would be on at all times, okay? There's no interlock that connects to this one here. This is just on at all times. Um, when this one is turned off, the power is basically stopping. You're not back feeding into this panel over here, all right? So now what happens is you've got your inlet hooked up, you have this power being fed, um, this panel being fed from power. So now what you need to do is now you're going to need to transfer whatever circuits that you want to move into the transfer panel. Okay, and this is what your electrician is going to do. And as you see here, I've set up a regular breaker and I've set up an arc fault breaker so I can kind of show you both how they work. Um, arc fault breakers, if your electrician working in the field, I've spent years, like I said, I was um, manager for every company I worked for. My last company, again, our office was quite big. Twice a week I did co-training with my guys and I found that very, very few electricians actually know what an arc fault breaker does. What an arc fault breaker does is it senses microscopic arcing. Okay, so what causes microscopic arcing? If this wire over here, or this wire, whatever, where it makes this connection right down here, we're too loose, or you see here when I extended some circuits before when we put the inlet in, um, I had to extend a couple wires here. So this is a connection, all right? If connections basically become loose, um, they create microscopic arcing. And microscopic arcing will ignite the oxygen around it, and then eventually it does burst, could cause, it, you know, it might just burn up the device or the breaker, but also could cause a potential fire as well. It's quite dangerous. So code these days for certain things, and you see on my panel, almost everything here is arc faulted. Um, these two didn't have to be, but pretty well everything else had to be arc faulted here. Like I said, that will sense microscopic arcing and it will shut the breaker down. It will trip the breaker before it can actually catch on fire or cause any kind of electrical damage um, in there. 
So like I said, I've done both, okay? So now what's gonna end up happening, and I'm gonna take this apart, but I'll show you this one over here, all right? So now what I would do is, let's say this is the circuit that I wanna transfer right over here. I'm gonna take this wire off right over here. I'm gonna put a wire nut on like this and extend the wire, okay? Now there's gonna be another um, pipe. This only shows two pipes, one going for the feeder, one going for the generator inlet. If I were connecting this panel, there would be a third pipe coming from panel to panel because you cannot run your feeder circuits and your branch circuits in the same pipe. They have to be separated. So there would be a third pipe basically running from panel to panel over here. Um, so what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I am gonna take this wire right here, I'm gonna extend this wire, and then I'm gonna pull it through the pipe into this panel over here, and I'm gonna connect it to my breaker over there, okay? And that is basically it. When you do this, you do not have to transfer your neutrals, okay? Um, you can take the circuit from this breaker right here, move it into this panel right here, and then leave the neutral connected up over here, okay? You don't have to move your, you know, into this bar here. You don't have to move the neutrals. The neutrals could stay in this panel here, all right? So that basically is it. So now I've transferred this circuit into my transfer panel. Now, the arc fault is the same thing. Difference being is the arc fault, the neutral does not connect to the neutral bar, okay? The neutral, as you see um, on this arc fault over here, I can show you, the neutral, uh, from the circuit in my house comes and connects right into here then you have what's called a pigtail which is easy to see here this is the pigtail it comes out of the breaker itself that is what connects to the neutral bar so the actual neutral from the circuit will connect into the arc fault breaker um, right down over here and uh, actually up over here on this side um, the hot wire would connect over here so you're basically doing the same thing like I just showed you over here you would extend the wire the difference being now you're going to extend both the neutral and the hot and you're going to pull them through that pipe that I said would be here and you're going to connect this breaker over to here. You'll connect your neutral on the top over here and you'll connect your hot over there. All right? So what's going to happen, once you've transferred all your circuits into this panel, the storm comes by, you lose power, um, whatever. So now what you do with your interlock over here, this would always be off when normal um, under normal conditions. You know, when you're just using your regular power, this would always be turned off. This would never be on. Um, so now the storm came through, so now what you've done is, with the interlock, this will turn off, this will turn on, so now you no longer have continuity going over here into the panel, now you have it going through here into the inlet, so when you've connected your generator, the power comes up through here, it energizes the panel here, and now your generator is energizing what has been put in this panel right over here, and that is called a transfer panel. However, the generator is not back feeding into this panel over here, okay? Um, Say so it's completely dead. And that's why you have to have an interlock. That's why it is code. It's very, very dangerous, all right? If you're not using the interlock, um, again, that's why I do these videos, is I've seen a lot, a lot of people over the years um, that have very, very dangerous circumstances. They've, um, just things are really, really rigged up. Um, I've seen people have electricians come out to their house and just simply not want to do it right. I've seen electricians tell people that, oh, you, you don't need to pull a permit. You don't need an inspector. The inspector is going to be a pain in a, you know what, um, come out. So they actually talk to people out of doing it. But the bottom line is they just wanted to rig something up quick, get the money and get out of there. They don't care whose life they're putting in danger. They don't care what's safe, what's not. So that is why I do these. So as a homeowner, you know exactly what an electrician coming out to your house is supposed to be doing in a case like this. If you're going to hook a generator up and you find out that you have to have a transfer panel for load calculations, um, well then now you guys know what needs to be done so if somebody comes out and tells you oh no you don't need to pull a permit i can just do it this way for you and that and well you know that's um you know you're, you're putting yourself on the line because the fact of the matter is is that your home you're still responsible for whatever happens even if you have an electrician come out and something goes wrong and you say well i had a licensed electrician come out you are still the homeowner okay and you could still be liable for any of that so that is how a, a transfer panel works basically. It's real, real simple. There's not a lot to it. Again, this is not intended for you guys to do yourself. This is intended for you to know what an electrician is supposed to be doing. Again, I've also seen uh, people say, oh, my neighbor did it, he's an electrician. My friend did it, he's an electrician. Well, in most cases, no, they're not an electrician. The things I've seen out there over the years have been very, very, very dangerous. Um, so like I said, first step is make sure that you could get an interlock for the panel that you have, the sub panel you're putting in. If you're building your own transfer panel, um, you're buying a panel from the beginning, okay? You might have one sitting around. I don't know if you're an electrician, whatever, you've worked with electric, but most likely um, when you're gonna call up an electrician to come out, you've gone out, you've bought your own materials because you will save money doing it that way. Then you've bought the panel, whoever you bought it from, you've asked, hey, can I get an interlock for two branch breakers here? Um, he's ordered it for you or they've had it for you or whatever. So you know what you're dealing with basically. 
So, um, like I said, make sure that you guys have an interlock kit for the panel that you buy, and it does come. It's not just the main interlock. This is how your arc fault connects. You would connect the neutral out of your other panel and the hot out of your other panel. This one here, you only need to connect the hot. The neutrals could remain in this panel over here, okay? You don't need to take them out. Um, I'm going to get into another one, how to hook up a sub panel. I have this one sitting here. I'm not going to get into that one today. Maybe another couple of days or so I'll get into that. But I'll show you guys how you can actually hook up a sub panel. Let's say that all these spaces were filled or whatever. Um, you have a reason for needing a sub panel. On my property, I actually think I have three or four sub panels um, right now. Um, so we're going to do a video on that, how to connect the sub panel and all that. But again, like I said, today we wanted to talk about a transfer panel because I've been getting a lot of comments. Um, not a lot. I'd say about three or four actually. Um, people have contacted me asking me how you connect the transfer panel um, if your code in your area won't allow you to do a generator inlet here and power up the entire panel. Because again, keep in mind, a generator will not power this entire panel here. When we use whole house standby generators, one of two things has to happen for permitting, okay? Either the generator that you buy has to um, put out enough of a um, put out enough electricity to uh, accommodate the load basically that's in your house um, that's kind of hard to do if you buy a 22k uh, generator I think that was somewhere depending on gas if you watch my other video on generators you know the gas matters as well um, natural gas propane um, gasoline gasoline being the highest you will get the maximum amperage if you have a gasoline generator a lot of standbys I've seen them run on diesel but um, you know most of them will run on propane or they will run on natural gas now when those are put in under permitting, we have to do load calculations, okay? Now, your load calculations, even though I have a 200 amp panel, when I figure all these out here, um, these load calculations might come out to about 125 amps in that area, which means the generator I buy either has to put out 125 amps, or I have to use what's called load shedding devices, which will balance out the loads. As one thing kicks on, it'll kick something else off, so nothing gets overloaded, all right? Um, with standby generators, whole house, that is standard. You pr pretty well have no choice with permitting. You have to do your load calculations. With a um, portable generator like this, I've worked a lot of areas where the municipality allows you just to put this in here and power up the entire panel. I've worked with other ones that do want load calculations for their permitting and they make you put in a transfer panel. Okay, so that's when you would have to do this, but you guys see how it works. Um, this is a feeder breaker here. This one receives the power putting in here, powers up your bus bar here, and again, when you have the interlock hooked up here, this will be what your panel is, okay? It's kind of like a sub-panel, but every day these are the circuits and this is the panel that you're using here. Um, this panel here, it's important that you do buy a good one because one thing people really didn't understand over the years, um, we would use the best panel out there because this panel will actually get more use than this panel does. Reason being is this panel here, you're going to use this panel every single day when your power's running and you don't have a storm. However, when the storm comes by and you do lose power, now you're still using this panel where you're not using this panel anymore. So this panel here, it's important that you put a good quality panel in um, because this is going to actually end up getting more use than what your other panel is. So um, guys, that is a transfer panel. It's not real, real hard. If you have any questions, comment down below. Um, if you guys like what you see here, um, like, subscribe, hit the notification notification button. Like I said, I am going to do one on sub panels here because um, I have this one sitting here. You can see I just basically put a board up here and mounted this panel here so we can talk about it today and I can kind of show you through a couple breakers and to give you an idea. But um, like I said, like, subscribe, hit the notification button and I'm going to start working on the sub panel video probably in the next few days or so. All right guys, have a great day. We'll see you on the next one.